there welcome back to my channel and if we haven't met before welcome to you as well my name is Fernanda and today's video really came out of conversations that we've had in the comment section in the last couple of months whenever I post outfit combinations videos usually the topic of wardrobe managers comes out and I personally have never tried one before but I figured that it might be useful for me to do so so that I can report back to you and then you guys can decide whether it's worth it or not to get one and if you don't know what a wardrobe manager is remember in the beginning of Clueless when Cher goes to her computer and like sifts through her clothes virtually and then she picks out an outfit and her closet produces it for her it's basically the modern version of that. So it's an app or a desktop application where you store your clothes virtually and it's supposed to help you remember what you have and it's supposed to make it a lot easier to get dressed in the morning. I decided to try Cladwell first because it was the only one of these managers that seemed to have a philosophy behind it that wasn't of a consumerist nature. My understanding from the research is that the app has evolved a lot in the last couple of years. For example, it used to have an affiliate shopping tab, which it no longer does. But based on the information that they are currently presenting on their website, I was the most drawn towards them. They're huge into capsule wardrobes, which if you know me, you know that I am as well. And they have a ton of information on their website to help you really build your ideal wardrobe and like create a vision for it, as well as information against fast fashion and information about paying garment workers proper wages they even have an ebook which is available for free to anyone who's willing to give them their email address so based only on the marketing I was like yes okay I'm into this sign me up and then I got to the pricing you can choose from different payment options, but Cladwell is essentially $9.99 with a monthly subscription, or you can choose to pay quarterly or annually to bring the price down to about $4.17 per month. But in my opinion, asking somebody to pay $49.99 for an annual subscription upfront is still a lot of money when you're not entirely sure if it's going to work for you yet. Now granted, if you choose to purchase this instead of purchasing more clothes, there is a savings in money, but there's no guarantee that just buying the app will ensure you that you won't spend any more money in clothes for the rest of the year. Glad will... <laughs> Do you guys hear that? One second, let me turn off the air conditioning. So... Our neighbor takes voice lessons on Mondays and Fridays, and I forgot that today was Monday and he had a voice lesson. But usually when he sings a song, I like to clap for him at the end. All right, anyway, they do have a free seven day trial that anybody can access without putting down a credit card. So I said, okay, I'm game, and I moved on. Right off the bat, the app asks you to select some items that you probably already have in your closet to start building your virtual closet. But what I noticed was that it was suggesting things to me that were very neutral and wardrobe staples and basics essentially. When you think of the stereotypical capsule wardrobe, it was kind of suggesting items like that, which are fine. Those are the items that are a lot of people likely have in their closets. But to me, building a wardrobe of only that lacked a little bit of color and style. You can add items of your own wardrobe via photographs or something like that, but it took a lot longer. The app does ask to use your location so that it can take the weather into account when suggesting outfits to you, which in my opinion was a huge plus. But right off of the beginning, I realized that I was having a little bit of trouble navigating the app and I would have really appreciated having a virtual tour of how it all worked as opposed to just like letting me go run wild. In the day when I set up the app, I didn't have a lot of time, so I just created a wardrobe based on the things that it suggested to me and then added a few more items like five or six that I currently have in my capsule and I called it a day. For the first three days of using Cladwell, this is what I wrote in my notes. Day one, two of my three outfit suggestions seemed plain and not super weather appropriate. I chose a pair of shorts with a striped t-shirt. My boyfriend said that I looked cute and noticed that it was a combination that I don't usually wear. I realize that the suggestions are only helpful if you like the items in your closet. I love my wardrobe, but I didn't really feel like wearing pants on almost 90 degree days. Day 2. Again, another classic outfit, the one that I don't wear often. I have to say that I was a little warm. The outfit options that it is giving me are very simple and not very styled, so I'm not really sure it pushes me out of my comfort zone. To me, what's most interesting about an outfit is the styling. Otherwise, it is just clothing. Day 3. Suggested the red dress with a pair of shoes that I wouldn't normally pair it with. I wore it, but I wasn't a fan. This was before I discovered that you could put things in storage. And this was a feature of the app that I actually really enjoyed. 
If you have clothes that are out of season or that you don't feel like wearing right now but you don't want to get rid of them, you can put them in storage so the app doesn't suggest outfits to you wearing those pieces. I thought that was pretty handy. But here's the thing. For some strange reason, the three recommendations that the app gave me every day were some of the most neutral and essentially boring outfits that I could put together with my wardrobe. And not only that, but they kept suggesting the same pieces over and over again. If the point of the app is to wear those items that you don't normally wear to your closet, why would it keep suggesting outfits with items that you wore yesterday or the day before? And frankly, I was bored. I built the most colorful capsule wardrobe that I've ever put together for the summer. And the app kept suggesting things that were very neutral, things that were gray, white, and black, and mostly like jeans, t-shirts, and tanks. When you get to the opening page, it gives you your three suggested outfits for the day, plus a few extras categorized under feeling neutral and most worn. But honestly, I think it would be better if it was completely the opposite. It's always easy to go neutral and it's always easy to go to those pieces that you already know that you like. If it puts them in front of you, it's basically like putting them in the front of your dresser drawer. I dressed from the top suggestions that the app was giving me for the first three days and by day four, I went broke. I just started telling it what I was choosing to wear and just logging it as opposed to letting it decide for me. Once I had been using the app for a few more days, then I figured out the best way for me to add more items into my virtual closet. And for me, it was to select the type of item that I wanted, select the color, and then don't give it much else, and then just browse through the thousands of images that they have loaded onto their app and select the one that was the most similar to the one that I had. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this was time consuming, but it was the least time consuming way for me personally to add items into my virtual closet. But here's the thing, the app kept crashing on me over and over again, which I found incredibly frustrating because even though at this point I was still using the free trial of the app, remember that this is a paid app to the tune of $9.99 a month, which I found really expensive for an app that was gonna be crashing on me during the setup. But once I powered through it and I had actually added a lot more items into my virtual closet, then the app started to make a lot more sense. But at this point, I was in day six of my seven day free trial. So I just bit the bullet, paid for a monthly subscription and decided to try it for a few more days. But I will say that once I got the hang of it, I started to enjoy it. The part that I enjoyed the most about the app was that they have what they call the explore page where other people share their outfits and photos of how they style them and put them together. And then you can click onto their profiles and see how many items they own, what percentage of it they wear, etc. And I found this fascinating. I obviously can't show you this because of privacy, but what I can tell you is that if you see an item in somebody else that you like, then you can click on that item and the app will essentially give you options of how you could wear those items with things that you already have in your closet. And if you decide that you want to purchase it, then you can easily add it to a shopping list. The ad is not gonna give you suggestions of where you can find similar items, but at least it'll give you a very concise shopping list so that you're not just shopping for the sake of shopping. So I thought that was pretty neat. Overall, Cladwell does have some pros and some cons. First, the pros. It does have this thing called the challenge capsule in which if you're new to capsule dressing, you can create a miniature capsule from within your virtual closet and it will only suggest outfits using the items in that capsule, which can be pretty handy if you're new to it. Second, it doesn't sell you clothes, which in my opinion is a huge plus because a lot of the times it's not that we need different clothes, is that we just need to learn how to wear them properly. And third, my personal favorite thing about the app is that it does have this like social media component where you can see other people's outfits and you can see their wardrobes, how many items they have and what percentage of the items in their wardrobes they wear, which I personally found fascinating. To me, it was the most interesting and inspiring part of the whole process. As for cons, first, the app is only available on iOS, which is a huge con. They've announced that there's an Android version coming out soon, but it's been longer than a year and it's still not here. And for the price, I would have appreciated a desktop component with it as well. Second, it still couldn't suggest outfits with every single item in my closet. For example, for my summer capsule wardrobe, which if you haven't seen, I will link it for you in the cards, it couldn't find any possible combinations with the denim vest that I've included in my capsule, which to me defeats the whole purpose of the app. You can add it manually, but like the point of it is that it gives you more ideas of how to wear your clothing, in my opinion. Next, it doesn't have a section for accessories, which I think is a huge missed opportunity because in my opinion, the headband, the hat, the jewelry, the belt, like those are the things that really elevates the outfits to the next level. And even when I was looking at other people's outfits within the app, 
those were the things that really just brought it up a notch a ton. Those are the things that are difficult to integrate into our wardrobe sometimes. While the app does have a personal stylist component where you can ask to talk to a real human and they respond within 24 hours, that to me didn't really seem practical because if I'm getting dressed in the morning and I'm not sure how to wear something, then I'm not gonna wait 24 hours for them to respond for me to wear it. I'm just gonna go to the thing that I know works and be out the door. If I was planning in advance, that might make more sense, but if you're feeling bold in the morning and you wanna wear something and you have to wait that long to get a response, then you missed an opportunity to wear an item. Next, the app was slow, painfully so. I thought it was my internet and it was not. I thought it was my phone and it was not. And honestly, for something that was meant to make your life easier, it was just too impractical, it was too slow, and I really think they should look into that. And lastly, the price. For me, the price was really expensive, but I will say that anything in life has to be monetized somehow, and this will be either done by the app selling your information to a third party or by brands paying the app to advertise to you on the app. In this case, you are the one paying, but your privacy is protected and nothing is being sold to you, so that might be worth it to you. All things considered, is it worth it? Should we do a drum roll? Honestly, it depends on where you are in your style journey. For example, if you're really, really stuck and you're not sure what to do with your wardrobe, this might be helpful. But if for some reason you can't afford it or you don't think that it would be really necessary, then you're not missing anything at all. I will say that the concept and philosophy behind it are fantastic and I love it. But in execution, honestly, it fails. And to me, presumably the reason why Cher Horowitz needed something like that to get dressed every morning was because she had a wardrobe so massive that she could not physically sift through it every morning when she was getting dressed, which I'm guessing that if you're watching my videos, that is not your case. But the average person in America really only wears about 20% of the clothing that they own. And if you think that's you and that you're in need of a really big wake up call, this might be helpful to get you there. If you do want to try it, I would recommend signing up for the seven day free trial and setting time aside to set up your wardrobe properly on the first day. That way you can make the most out of it and see if you want to continue paying for the app. I hope this video is useful to help you make a decision on wardrobe managers. And if you have tried some before, I would love to hear from you. Which one are you using? What do you like about it? What do you not? And if you've tried Gladwell, please, I would love to hear what you have to say about it in the comments below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you found it helpful. And another reason to give this video a big thumbs up is that this is my 30th video of the year. That's right, I did complete my New Year's Eve challenge, which I'm super excited about. I don't think I've ever completed a New Year's resolution ever before in my life, so I'm super pumped. But having said that, I do wanna let you guys know that there won't be a video next week, so I will see you in two weeks time. And I have a video that I'm very excited about because I think it might have the ability to make you guys some money during this economic crisis. So if you don't wanna miss that, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.